I had to go to a gay bookstore with my friend Eric because he couldn't buy, you know, certain gay stuff. You had to like go to the gay, gay bookstore. Probably. It was he used Astroglide, and that okay. was the only place he could find Astroglide. So we had to go there to <laughs> get it. Buy that at freaking Kroger now, right? I know. Well, this is 1993. Kroger. But then I'd get to see magazines like Big Bear Magazine. Or it'd yeah. be like Jeff was on the cover in a pair of Daisy Dukes with his balls hanging out. Mm, you know. <laughs> well, that's his Christmas card last year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I still get royalties from that picture. That's nice. <laughs> We're Generation X, laughing at the world today. We're getting older, but we're still gonna play. Mm-hmm. The devil. All right, welcome to the show. Uh, no apologies this week. I refuse to apologize for my William Devane impression, even though it probably didn't sound like him all that much, and most of you don't know who he is. I think it did sound like him. It's just that most of the people don't know who he is. But I, I do, do think not know who William Devane is. <laughs> Have you not ever watched 24? Come on. Jack. Well, we want more than 10 listeners. But we just lost 10. No. Nah. <laughs> they can skip through. They can skip through. Lots going on this week. Thank you, of course, to our new viewers and, and listeners, uh, mostly viewers. Or if you, you know, just listen on YouTube, then I guess technically you're a listener and not a viewer. But hey, thanks for joining us. And, and for those of you who've come recently and stuck around, we appreciate you very, very, very much. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends all about Radio Labyrinth. And uh, now on with the show. On with the show. I did not, you know, this show when it started was originally a show about Gen Xers who watch TV and watch movies. And we talked a lot about that. Sometimes we talked about audiobooks and music. Um, and then slowly uh, over the years, and we've been doing this a long time, you can see if you go back and watch, I actually look like I was in my 20s, right? The um, No, that's not true. So, you know, we, we had the four years of the, the Trump era, which was always contentious. And, uh, you know, it got to be the point of where you would go on social media. Nobody's talking about TV anymore. Everybody's just fighting about politics. I think we're away from that. You sure about that? You sure about that? Probably not, but I like to think that we are. Uh, but nowadays, I don't really watch a lot of TV anymore. But uh, Jeff and Steph convinced me to watch a, sh a show that's on, uh, mostly Steph, convinced me to watch a show that's on Netflix. We'll talk about that later. Uh, it's called Eric. Uh, it's about Eric Trump. And it's a <laughs> real deep dive into Eric Trump and all things Eric Trump. Um, and it's just amazing to watch him in Africa, uh, you know, sneak up on a on a lion that uh, has been drugged so it won't run or attack and just shoot it. And then go home and put that head on the wall. God, too. Isn't that show about Eric Trump? No, it's not. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Um, speaking of Trump, uh, a lot of people on... Reddit in the uh, in the Theo Vaughn thread were were upset because uh, I think they sh he shook hands at the UFC event uh, with Donald Trump and then uh, people were going oh my God is he going to vote for Trump is he going to talk to Trump I don't Theo's just a guy Theo's just a guy he does a show he he likes fame uh, he probably doesn't really have a political bone in his body I don't get that from listening to the show uh, do any of you guys get a get an inkling that he's a, a right wing Gur, no. I wouldn't say that a right winger ex exactly is even a trumper. Anymore. No, no, I wouldn't say that either. I wouldn't say that. I don't think he's right wing. No. Uh. Uh. He's his uh. own thing. I'm no wing. I got no wings. <laughs> I'm no wing. But yeah, it's it's fun when things like that happen, and then you immediately go to social media or you go to Reddit, and then people are just arguing and arguing and arguing. And the best thing to do is just. Not dip your toe into that pool. You can look at it, but don't put your foot in it. That's that's my, you know, that's the way I've been trying to live for the past couple of years. You can look at it. If it's interesting, uh, you can watch people fighting each other. But I don't put my, my, my toe in that pool. Not even on my troll accounts anymore, which I don't use that often. <laughs> uh, uh, 
I can't figure out how to do his voice. I never really got any good at it. I wish I could because you could go back and see. See, I don't even, I can't do it. Let's turn it into Dusty Slay. Yeah, I don't really do things like that. <laughs> uh, so we got a new house, uh, the homestead. Uh, we, we bought land. My wife and I bought some land and we built a house on it. And uh, we don't care who you vote for. Uh, nothing happened during the eclipse. I thought the earth would come to an end and a lot of town. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't get that from Theo. I do not. I don't get it from a lot of these guys. In fact, the only politician I think that any of these podcasters are going to vote for would be RFK because they can't stomach uh, Trump or Biden. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's where RFK has been going. That's his universe, the podcast universe. He's been on all of them. And uh, the most awkward one I've ever seen was this past Kill Tony episode where I didn't expect him to walk on that stage at all. Tim Dillon was one of the panelists. There were a couple other people I don't remember. Um, oh, yeah. One of them was Post Malone, that noted comedian Post Malone. So RFK Jr. got up on stage and, and did a little uh, did a little stand up. He did his one minute. His name got pulled out of the bucket and uh, everybody got super excited, especially Tony uh, Hinchcliffe. But. I thought it would be fun if we had, I wrote some jokes. Jeff gave me some jokes. Whoever wrote those jokes, thank you. Uh, I wrote some of my own. If you guys will indulge me, I will now do RFK Jr. as a roast comedian. Would you like that? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, somebody introduced me. Somebody do a great Tony Hinchcliffe impression. Coming out of the bucket, one minute, that's RFK Jr. Oh, I'm so happy to come out here uh, after Casey Rocket. What an intro, huh? Casey Rocket is a perfect example of what happens to people who get too many vaccines. <laughs> I recently told everybody that I had a brain worm. Uh, my brain worm wanted to be a comedian, so I told him the first step is being able to write great jokes. Uh, he got so good at it. Netflix hired him to write for the Tom Brady roast. I don't know what Tom and Bert did with him after that. <laughs> Speaking of Tom and Bert, their podcast is called Two Bears, One Cave, which is a euphemism for how Bert spends his Saturday nights. <laughs> Bert Kreischer's nickname is The Machine, which is fitting because his comedy is a lot like a Roomba. It sucks for 60 minutes and scares away the pussy. Oh, crap. <laughs> Tom Segura hates poor people so much, Trump's considering him to be his running mate. <laughs> Tom and Bert have their own vodka called Poor Osos, which is Spanish for pig jizz. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, I see Tim Dillon is here. Hi, Tim. Tim Dillon is the fatter, gayer version of Alex Jones. <laughs> But instead of complaining about the pharmaceutical companies turning the frogs gay, Tim pours atrazine on his cock and goes to ponds hoping for the best. <laughs> uh, Tim Dillon went all in on the COVID jabs. In fact, he's taken more shots in the ass than anyone on this panel. <laughs> no, Tony may be a close second. Tony's great, though, and, and what a great crowd here in L.A. Nice to see Tony branching out. Especially since he's more comfortable piloting the mothership around Uranus. <laughs> anyway, I'm not really a comedian. Uh, then again, neither is the guy who wrote these jokes. <laughs> and thank you. It's too bad. It's really too bad that you couldn't have slipped those to him before he went up there. Oh, the jokes? Yeah. That's exactly what he needed. He needed some jokes. They probably wrote him jokes and he looked at them and went, no, I can't. You know, he probably had his wife look at him. <laughs> he said, somebody's going to clip this. <laughs> well, she, it, she did kind of like Sandman him off the stage anyway. Oh, hell yeah, she did. She came out there like Jill Biden. Come on, Joe. Oh, oh. <laughs> who was Cheryl to run? Huh? Cheryl? Who was, who was Cheryl to run? <laughs> I wish anybody would run. <laughs> RFK that is so interesting now that, you know, he came out guns a blazing went on all the podcasts and all the podcast bros who a lot of them were bernie bros um a lot of them some of them voted for trump some of them voted for biden um but 
he knows his audience. And so that's why a lot of people think him running is really a conspiracy to help Biden. Now, I don't believe this. And I'm sure that anybody with a brain doesn't believe this. He wants to run. He wants to be president. I think that's I take him at face value. Thank you. Uh, but the, the the thing is that he's going on all these shows where you have these these mostly the podcast universe, the comedy podcast universe is mostly dudes. Right. Steph being an exception because she's got a good sense of humor. No, I'm a dude. OK, I'm not going to call you a dude. I just think you have a good sense of humor. Um, But he, he's he's going to get that vote. That's, what, you know, Tony Hinchcliffe. I think Joe Rogan, if he if you put a gun to his head, uh, that's who he would vote for. I, I hate it that his voice sounds so weird. That is true. If, but he, if he had a good voice, if he was like a if he was more eloquent orator. He sounded like his uncles. Yeah. Even if he sounded like that, I think he'd have a much better chance. I do, too. Also, if he didn't have videos of him saying, I think you ought to be able to abort a child right up until the last minute. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a video that showed up this week where he goes, he goes, I think gasoline should be twelve dollars a gallon. So people will go buy electric cars. Oh. First of all, electric cars are way too expensive. Yeah. And a lot of states don't give you that um, that credit anymore. The environmental credit for buying them. And no one wants to pay twelve dollars a gallon for gas. People no. will get horses. People will just get horses. So two eighty five jam packed with horses. Well, then if that like if you're if you're somebody who's like trying to buy a car and make it last ten or fifteen years, and the battery goes out in what like eight nine years, and you got to pay what fifteen thousand dollars for a freaking battery or some crap. Yeah. yeah, I mean, get out of here. Also, if it catches on fire, well, tough shit. You're going to end up like Anne Hage because those things are impossible to put out. <laughs> you're so wrong for that. That's how she died because she was driving. If she had been. I mean, she would have been fucked up because she crashed drunk into a house, uh, but she'd probably still be alive if she had been driving a, you know, a, a combustion vehicle. Stop it. Oh I'm telling God. you the truth. Look into it. <laughs> Fucking lithium just burning her. Um, I forgot one joke. Hey, William Montgomery, it's been 160 years. The Civil War is over. You lost. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. Who is William yeah, Montgomery? Think it's that big red beard guy. Oh, that. Yeah. OK. I know who he is. So um, we can be political without being political. We don't take sides here. We're not we're not worried about it. We're not dipping our toe into that shit pool uh, pool full of poop. Speaking of pools full of poop, X Elon Musk's X has gone triple X. I took this out of the news because I want to talk about it a little bit. How is this news? There's always been pornography on X. Sometimes when you're searching a trending topic or something that you know is trending and you type it into the search bar and you click on uh, latest instead of top, all you see are just, what is, the, arms and assholes. I'm not the comedian who wrote that, uh, but that's what I see. There's all sorts of porn. I searched something today and it was just all Asian porn. It had nothing to do with Asia at all. Uh, but I guess the, the, the thing is, I think what's, what's happening is, 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 uh, uh, so, 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 so much money is, um, 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 uh, uh, uh being made by, um, only fans that I, I would, I would like, uh, uh, to get, to get some of that money. Some, some of that money would be really good. And, and Grimes is going to be one of the first, um, even though we're not married anymore and, uh, uh, Grimes will be doing um, some 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 naked DJing sets that that people would like, and uh, you know I I I I I I will also be doing a lot of um of of nude things. So if 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 you want to join um um X uh, and, and do some porn, that, uh, that that that's good. But why do we have to have porn everywhere? Steve Jobs, who created Apple and created the iPhone, uh, used to he famously said, "Can't there be one place where there isn't porn?" Yeah, there should be for sure. I mean, I it's, it's so easily available. I mean, what is even the allure of it? You can see it anytime you want, anywhere you want. And yeah. It's like, why offer it? It was more fun when you had to hunt and peck, when you had to go to the to the local corner store and shove it in your sweatpants, like Jeff. <laughs> there was seven, eight magazines shoved in his sweatpants. Or, you know, you fake a note to get a Playboy. There was a time when if you wanted an adult movie, you went between a couple of, you know, saloon doors like Jeff used to do and always run into my dad. And when he was coming out of it, that was funny that Jeff used to tell me this when he'd go rent porn from the well, I don't know what it was called. It there was were like a, three different stores that I would go to and your dad was outside of all of them. Oh, hey, how you doing, Jeff? <laughs> there was one in, in this in Elmira, New York, that when I was a kid, 
the building it was called a Red Barn, which was, was a, a restaurant. restaurant. Yeah, it was a chain restaurant called the Red Barn, and they had food. Their food was great. It's no Lums, but it was good. Uh, but they turned it into an adult into a video. It's not an adult video, or just a regular. You know, back before Blockbuster, you know, killed everybody and and put everyone else out of business. A video store was a mom and pop type of place. They bought all the videotapes. They bought all the VCRs. Um, but every time Jeff would come out of one of these swinging doors, there'd be my dad. Oh, you got a good movie here. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, who's in that one? <laughs> I had to go to a gay bookstore with my friend Eric because he couldn't buy. You know, certain gay stuff, you had to, like, go to the What's gay gap? bookstore. Probably. It was He used Astroglide, and that was the only place he could find Astroglide, so we had to go there to <laughs> get it. Buy that at freaking Kroger now. Right. I know. Well, this is 1993, <laughs> but then I'd get to see magazines like Big Bear Magazine, or it'd yeah. be like Jeff was on the cover in a pair of Daisy Dukes with his balls hanging out. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> well, that's his Christmas <laughs> card last year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I still get royalties from that picture. That's nice. <laughs> I still enjoy that platform. I still like X. I don't know why, but out of all of them, I, th- I still think TikTok is the best for mindless entertainment or Instagram. They're kind of similar. I stumble out of bed and I tumble to the kitchen. Or is it I tumble out of bed and I stumble to the kitchen? Pour myself a cup of ambition. Yawn and stretch and try to come to life. Jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping. Out on the street, The traffic starts jumping. It's folks like me on the job from nine to five. Although now I get up, uh, maybe put pants on, turn on Zoom and just do my job all day. And I have a little program that moves the cursor around. So my boss. I can't believe that you did not read those lyrics in Casey Kasem's voice. (laughs) I tumble out of bed and I stumble to the kitchen. Pour myself a cup of ambition. All right, you get mad at me for doing William Devane. Who do you think knows Casey Kasem these days? More people than <laughs> William Devane. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> you think? They are making a remake of 9 to 5, which was something they tried to do, either an updated version of it or um, or remake, complete remake in the 2000s. Lily Tomlin was talking about this recently. 9 to 5 is a movie that came out, I think, in 1980. It starred uh, the late Dabney Coleman uh, as uh, Mr. Hart. And he was a prick. And, you know, he was a noted prick in all these movies. Not every one of them, but most of them. Um, And then you had the three primary people in the movie were Dolly Parton, Jane Fonda, and Lily Tomlin. And it is a classic movie. It was a fun movie. It's hilarious from from start to finish. Just a great movie. And I think that they tried to to adapt it to modern times and they just couldn't figure out how to do it. Well, um, Jennifer Aniston uh, is producing and Diablo Cody uh, is going to write it. So that should tell you right there that you're not going to want to see it. Uh, Dolly Parton wants Miley Cyrus to play Dora Lee, which is the character that Dolly played. But that character in 9 to 5 was she was i guess at that time everybody thought dolly was super sexy but she was the most naive she was very country i don't think if you know who miley cyrus is you don't know that because she's you know showed everything on her body a thousand times she definitely is not voluptuous in any shape or form she'd have to gain weight she's a great voice not when she talks. When she sings, she does. Her oh, I know. I can't awful. listen to her talk. It's awful. Uh, yeah. My nose is all stuffed up. I hate my dad as a country singer. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like a garbage pail kid when she talks. I don't sound like a garbage pail kid. <laughs> you see all them pictures Terry Richardson took of me for Vice Magazine where I'm shoving stuff in, in my holes? Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to be in a, in a nine to five. You can't make nine. To, people don't work nine to five anymore. There's no <laughs> steno pools. There's no steno pools. There are no typists working at a company like that. Um, But the whole premise of the movie is they're not getting paid. And, you know, there's that one lady that I forget the actress's name, who's a drunk. And she just goes, "Had a girl. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then they had the boss's assistant who would say, holy mayor. Um, you know, they actually made a sitcom out of uh, nine to five. It didn't last very long. It was very short lived, but I watched that too. But every time nine to five came on HBO, I watched it mostly because it was funny. Uh, the scene where they all get high or the scene where they, they think that they've killed their boss and then they find out they haven't. So they tie him up. I don't want to spoil it if you've never seen it. 
But I thought it would be fun to uh, throw out some names to see who could be recast. So Dora Lee plays Mr. Hart's personal secretary. And everybody in the office thinks that she's banging him when she's not. And she doesn't like that reputation. Taking her her role over, we have a couple of names. Uh, Jeff, throw out the, well, you guys throw out the ones you put in there. Sydney Sweeney, Christina Hendricks, Kat Dennings. He just went for all the big boobs. I see, yeah. I see a theme here. Yeah. A theme. Well, he's keeping a canon. That's, That's you know, true. That's true. We, we, we like to keep a canon around here. I suggested Lizzo because you're going to have to go with the diversity angle to make a I movie. put in some diversity in the other ones. Violet. Uh, was originally played by who played by Lily Tomlin, right? Yeah. yeah, Lily Tomlin, and she's like the ringleader of everyone. And uh, Lily Tomlin, she made great movies back then. By the way, one that no one talks about anymore is The Incredible Shrinking Woman, which I still love. All of me, all of me. That came yeah, out. that's a great movie. Yeah. Um. So to replace her, Jeff, what names did you put in? Big Nataro, Kate McKinnon, or Kristen Stewart. Those are all good. I suggested Laverne Cox. I could I could see Kristen Stewart doing it. Not Laverne Cox? Sure. All right. I see and Laverne Cox doing anything. Judy Judy was played by Jane Fonda, and she's sort of the office ditz. Or at least you think so. That's her character. Um, and uh, instead of Jane Fonda in the updated version, Jeff put... Zendaya or Zazie Beetz. Who's Zazie Beetz? The chick from Atlanta. And also she played uh, uh, Domino... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I suggest that we continue on the theme of of the modern filmmaking and, and gender swapping and things like that. And Timothy Chalamet plays uh, Judy. Of course, he'd have to have a different name or not. <laughs> I think Timothy Chalamet should play the Dabney Coleman part. No, too young. Yeah, they have young bosses now. And, yeah. And these I think that would make it an interesting angle is that he's a young little bastard. And then there are all these middle aged women under his thumb. No. All right. I can see where you're coming from. All right. So we have suggestions for Mr. Hart, other than Timothy Chalamet, which I agree would probably be good. Uh, Mr. Hart, of course, played by Dabney Coleman. And uh, what names did you put down, Jeff? I put in Stephen Toblowski and Walton Goggins and John Carroll Lynch. Now, for people who might not know, Stephen Tobolowski, he's the guy from... Um, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Nid. Phil! That guy. Uh, and Walter Goggins, of course. Everybody knows who Walter Goggins is. John Carroll Lynch, who's that? He's that guy that uh, is a character actor, big big guy. He's on American Horror Story shows. He played the, Oh, yeah, the, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he in... Uh, he was in Zodiac, too. Yeah. Wasn't he in Fargo? Isn't he the husband? Yeah, he's the Fargo? husband that yeah. paints the mallard. And Drew Carey's brother on uh on yeah. Carey show. Okay. It's My kind of on the nose, but Steve Carell. Steve Carell. That, yeah. that would actually work. See, all these, I wanted it to be, originally I thought we'll pick joke ones, which is why I did. But these are all really good casting choices. Um, I suggest Thomas Lennon. Yeah, he'd be good. <laughs> yeah. He or would Louis, be good. Louis C.K. Oh, well, no, yeah. Nice, but yeah, that would be good. <laughs> and he, he would like being tied up <laughs> and put in all that bondage stuff. So anyway, um, Best of luck to Diablo Cody and Jennifer Aniston. I see no need for this. And I see Lil Lily Tomlin's part. I didn't get to put this in. Sarah Silverman. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good uh, one, too. Oh, that'd be perfect. That's absolutely perfect. You know, and Amy Schumer could play Judy. Oh, yeah. Amy Schumer would be great as that. You need people that can do comedy. and Yeah. And, but Dora Lee, uh, I got to go with Jeff's choices. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. It's news, trailers, and trends with Steph. Jesus God, I guess. Jesus, God, what are you, my grandpa? Jesus, <laughs> that, that, Jesus, God, Timothy, you always got to be eating. This, this Bucky's co-founder's son got indicted, I guess, for secretly filming the guests undressing and having sex at their lake house. Hey, if wait Diddy, a minute. If Diddy can do it, he can. <laughs> wait a minute. He's videotaping people at a Bucky's getting undressed. Not at Bucky's, at a, at a lake house that he owns. Oh, I thought he was like had cameras where the truckers go because like, you know how truckers hot it aren't is. allowed in Bucky's. They're not allowed. I thought it was a truck stop. No, no, it's it's a, a, people stop. Yeah, the truck stops are always across the street from them. There's always okay. like two. <laughs> well, if I owned a flying J, there would be cameras in those showers. <laughs> yeah, you thought he was doing a Chuck Berry? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but well, so he would. He would go ahead. Yeah, like so he had these cameras set up in this lake house and he invited people, you know, to stay there 
And yeah, uh, yeah they, he had cameras in the bathrooms and all this other stuff, and he just filmed them doing stuff in states of undress. I, I'm assuming maybe taking a crap or whatever, but this little freak who obviously this kid's got more money than half of you know, the country. So let's and, let's take the guy, the Pucky's son, the co-founder's son, who didn't earn anything and is just squandering his dad's money by recording his dad's friends or his friends having sex and being an all around creep. Compare that to a guy who made his own money like Mr. Beast and what he does with it. He doesn't put cameras in people's room. We haven't heard anything about that yet. I hope, and I hope not, too. And I, I think it's highly unlikely. Mr. Beast does good things for people. This rich Nepo piece of crap. Bucky's guy is uh, is garbage. A total piece of crap. Yes. Um, which I finally got to go to Bucky's. Feel like it's overhyped, guys. Oh, I don't there's, like Bucky's. There's just like too much thing. crap in there and too many people. And yeah, you didn't get the beaver nuggets. The no. beaver nuggets are gross. No, they're good. I'd rather eat corn pops. There's just they're just giant corn pops. They're just slabs of things and hunks being cut and. Yeah, There's people drooling from the mouth. Yeah, I forgot. There's a wall of meat there, Jeff. So she's not gonna like it. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> a wall of meat. Okay, I haven't. It's what true. Is a wall of meat. What is there it? There is an entire the, wall of yeah, beef jerky. entire wall of beef jerky. Yes. Yeah. Can you get hog jerky? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I love me some hog jerky. <laughs> well, did, did you guys see the new uh, Eminem video that just came out where he pretty much takes uh, his old guess who's back. When he was Slim Shady. You know, uh -huh. he killed Slim Shady. has been gone for a long time. I'm a Slim Shady fan. I'm not an Eminem fan. First two and albums I, I liked. Yeah. Well, that was Slim Shady. He was Slim Shady albums. Yeah. yeah. And then he got rid of them and uh, he got all. I, I, that was that was his whole shtick was the Slim Shady thing. That's what I mean, other than the fact that, yes, he is an amazing rapper or whatever. But Who's his new video. Girls go around the outside, <laughs> round the outside, round the outside. <laughs> But in his new video, he's got everybody in it. Like all, most of the people that he had in the first one, and uh, even Pete Davidson shows up at the end, pretending Why? to be him. Oh, okay. Shane Gillis yeah. is in it. Shane Gillis is in it. Yeah. yeah, Dre. I mean, it's the the song is. I mean, it's whatever. But the video, if you haven't seen it, it's great. And I, if you watch it split screen from the old video. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that he pretty much did it almost frame for frame. Oh, yeah. so it's a remake of. In a different key, in a different. Uh, okay. I mean, it's neat. It's really cool how I did it. And I figured that. this would be hit her, uh, Steph's big thing was the hook that he used. Yeah, the uh, hook is great, and just and then when they show him side by side, uh, where he's old him now, his fifty-two-year-old self, fifty-one-year-old self, beside of young him uh, with the bleach blonde hair and all that kind of crap. Uh, but people are giving it great reviews. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I'll watch it tonight. Why not? I yeah. think you should. I mean, it's like three minutes of your life. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Steve and Miller gave his stamp of approval, and he doesn't approve anything. Steve Miller? Not Steve Miller. Yeah, Steve Miller. He did Abracadabra, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. That's yeah. What, that's what the song is. It's it's Abracadabra redone. As... All right. I saw people bitching about it on, and uh, <laughs> I saw people bitching about it on a forum, and I hadn't yet listened to it, so now it makes sense. And one of the comments was. Yeah, that's an old 70s song my granddad liked. <laughs> Those little bastards. Those little I got, bastards. I got my brother the 45 for Christmas when it was a hit song, so it's not that fucking old. Yeah, it is. All right, go ahead. Well, it goes right into the fact of how, you know, Method Man and Red Man, they were performing at the Hot 97 Summer Jam, and Method Man said, I'm never doing this crap again because the generation gap is just too wide at this point. Because him and Method Man are up there doing, uh, like, Duroc Wilder. So, you know, they're classic hits, and right. they actually rap, and they actually have lyrics, and they pan out to the crowd. And some people are into it, but a lot of them are just looking at them like, what is or, this crap? We're looking at their phones. <laughs> yeah, they were all their watching phones. the phones. Yo, why like, aren't you mumbling? Why aren't you mumbling? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, I like the fact that hip hop has a generation gap now. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. yeah. Who would have thought Wu Tang was for the old people? <laughs> they are. <laughs> right. You think they're old? What do you think? Run DMC. If Run DMC did a show at Jazz Fest or at Music Midtown, it would be all old people. There'd be oh, no. Yeah. 
It's so true. But we but you look at Mess and you look at Redman, they don't look old. I mean, no. they're still in they're great shape. Old. Yeah, I mean, they're 50 or whatever, but it, they surely don't act it. But Mm-mm. anyways, fuck these kids. I hate them. Um, Trump is definitely not getting this dude's vote uh, in Florida who crashed into a police station last night um, wearing only a lady's top. He got out of the car and... And started throwing rubber snakes and cell phones at the police. And mm-hmm. he said that the devil told him to kill everyone. And he hates Donald Trump. Oh, well, I have no use for guys that wear women's tops. I mean, unless they're going to vote for me. I would take his vote if he voted for me. Uh, but I don't need guys like this. I got enough problems right now. Well, not in Georgia anymore. <laughs> the rubber I, thought, snakes, I thought Hunter though. Biden was sober now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a great joke. The spectacle of him only having a lady's top on, nothing else, just the lady's top, and the throwing the rubber snakes. Why? I don't. You never. But the know. devil. The devil, the devil made him do it. Yeah. <laughs> the devil told him to do it. Well, it's Pride Month, and I know Jeff is? is excited too. Yeah, it is. It, I didn't notice is... by looking at all the logos in my timeline that it was Pride Month. <laughs> well, it's not in this bar in Idaho because they are giving straight men free beers during Pride Month. Damn it. Let's go there right now. (laughs) We'll go to Idaho right now and drink all that beer for free. You can't do nothing about it. I wonder what kind it is. What kind of beer they're no, getting? I'm, I'm wondering how they vent, how they vent all the people that come in. Do you have to kiss the yeah. bar owner's yeah. wife or something? Right. Well, Y'all you know, it, put your dick in my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't God, worry, no. she's 18. Well, God knows straight men have, they've really been getting the shaft for so long. <laughs> well, if they're not, if they're getting the shaft, they're not allowed to have it. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, did you guys know that Dave Coulier, he finally revealed the origin of how Uncle Joey got his last name? What was his last name? Gladstone. Okay. It was because Dave was glad he was stoned. Oh, well, that's not controversial or (laughs) naughty. Maybe in 1990 it was, but now everybody's high. You go any store or shit, I got, I told you guys, okay, I picked my wife up at the airport Sunday. In the car behind, no, I dropped her off at the airport last Thursday. Her and my son Gilbert, and they went up to Boston. I dropped, and the car in front of me reeked a weed at um, 6.30 on a, a Thursday morning. Mm-hmm. That's that Every, ride share. The whole, yeah, the whole city, everywhere you go, weed, weed, weed. You walk by somebody at the grocery store, weed. And why are there so many shootings? Why aren't these people chilling out? Those aren't the people smoking weed. <laughs> I don't know what crack smells like. Uh, well, have you guys seen the trailer for this In a Violent Nature movie? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think Dustin's probably looking forward to this one. Yep. And this is all I've heard about. If you see the trailer, they're saying this is like the first real summer slasher that we've had in years and years and years. So maybe since we were kids watching slasher movies. But there's supposed to be some death scene in this movie that is so hardcore that people have a hard time watching it like they're leaving the theater or throwing up throwing up in the theater yeah yeah Yeah. so i don't know i um i'm only looking forward to one horror movie this year what's that you guys know what it is what's that one with the chick was it just called x i want to see maxine that's the one i'm looking forward to yeah oh that looks pretty good i don't really feel like that's going to be this close to this type of no We'll no, just... they say this is like Friday the 13th from Jason's point of view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck. Oh, I'm in. I'm totally in. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was the cool part about all those 80s slasher movies was you got to see the killer, like uh, Michael Myers and Halloween. You got to see their perspective, and they've killed that in the last 20, 30 years. They have, yeah. I remember that Siskel and Ebert used to complain about that. Um, uh, Roger Ebert once said that... Uh, they didn't like horror movies where you saw everything from the eyes of the killer. And Halloween was one of the first ones where you saw everything from the eyes of the victim. That yeah. makes sense. No, that's not saying much. It's the same guy wrote Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. So Hey, everybody loves that. <laughs> I love that movie. It's a great movie. We got to watch that one on Patreon. 
Well, I don't know if they've lifted it yet or not, but uh, if you lived uh, in certain parts of Atlanta over the weekend, you had no water and your business couldn't open because the pipes were 100 years old and they just said, you know what, we can't do this anymore. And they just busted. Yep. And the mayor was in, uh, where was he, in Memphis? Fundraising. Oh, was he? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think he's a nice guy and all. I mean... (laughs) It's fixed. Well, a lot of people were pissed for the fact that he is an engineer and they thought if anything he was going to fix, it would maybe be these pipes. You think he'd fix it himself? Or at least like look into it because in the city of Detroit, um, which the median income in Detroit is half of what it is in the city of Atlanta, they are replacing all of the lead lines in Detroit right now before they break. They've invested $800 million to do it over the next 10 years. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, well, listen. Really I have my Megan, piece? Megan, Megan the Stallion concert. I know, oh. right? She was pissed. Oh. No, no water, no wap. Oh, damn. Oh, that dry ass pussy dad. <laughs> I was going to say she had a dad. Got that dry ass pussy <laughs> drier than a broom. <laughs> it's a drat. Put it into my sandpaper womb, womb. I don't know. That was terrible. But my favorite quote, my favorite joke, though, was. um. When somebody wrote, these pipes are <laughs> these pipes are pumping out water from before we were allowed to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Who said that? That's a funny joke. That, somebody that, said that on uh, Instagram. It was like one of the comments because people were so pissed about this whole situation. Yes. Folks that don't take themselves seriously on uh, on Instagram are the best people to follow or at least read the comments of because they're always funny. And the last thing I have to say is they have fully modified a Tesla Cybertruck and it is ready for SWAT and military use. And it looks like a big piece of crap. If you've seen it, uh, you've seen those dogs, those China, China's got those DARPA dogs with guns on them. Wow. Wow. No, they don't. That was the worst case of CGI I've ever seen. I don't fuck you up. Wow. <laughs> wow. I wish it was that. All right. We'll be right back. Greetings, Radio Labyrinth podcast listeners. Over there in Conyers, Atlanta Pizza in Euro is heading into summer. Um, You want a cool, refreshing drink, huh? Well, Atlanta Pizza in Euro has over 16 ice-cold local draft beers on tap. 16 of them. William Devane loves a cold beer. I like a nice IPA when I'm playing golf. And you can always find their amazing pizza, gyros, and Greek salad if you're hungry. Stop by Atlanta Pizza in Euro Monday through Friday from 11 to 9 p.m. Saturdays, 12 to 9 p.m., closed on Sundays. They also have team trivia on Tuesday nights from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Bring your smartest friends and test your trivia knowledge against the best Conyers has to offer. And since that would be Dustin, you don't really have much of a challenge ahead of you. Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Proudly serving the East Metro Atlanta area for over 40 years. Their food truck is also available, so contact Mike at 770-483-6228 for more details. Hey, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens since 2005 with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706 316 9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com let's talk a little bit about the pod verse i don't know how many of you did what i did which was a nine hour um over the course of a couple of days joe rogan fest um and primarily because uh of the guests that he had on He had uh, it started off with Duncan Trussell. I always love a good Duncan Trussell episode. Those two get along really well. There's never a dull moment. And Duncan Trussell is out there and a lot of fun to listen to. I like his voice. Uh, Anybody else into that? Do you guys like Duncan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always liked him. The cartoon he had on Netflix was pretty cool. That was crazy. I like him. I think I have never seen him do stand up. I just like him on podcasts. I think he's a funny guest. And then, like, a day later, he dropped an almost three-hour interview with Harlan Williams, and that was awkward as fuck. Harlan's been doing the rounds. He's been doing all the podcasts, not this one. Uh, We can't get anybody. Um, Can't even get Burt Kreischer to return my phone call. However, more on that in a minute. Um, 
Harlan trolled Joe for most of the show, told him he had a tapeworm, and then at the very end of the podcast pulled a snake out of his ass that he had in his pants the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but the I love Harlan Williams, and we talk about him a lot on this show. Um, Rogan would not roll with the improv. They know each other. They've known each other for years, and Rogan wouldn't give in, wouldn't let him do his goofy stuff. No, come on, be serious. No, I heard that. I'm ignoring you. I'm, not, I'm ignoring you. Come on, be serious. Come on, quit joking around. Because, you know, Joe wants to talk about rocks and space. Yeah. yeah. Har tear. Harlan is not going to stop joking around no matter what. No, no, no. Harlan never broke character. By the end of the episode, I think the last 40 minutes or so, there's a nice, comfortable um, connection between the two of them. Um, and then uh, Sal Volcano. He's from the show that Jeff likes a lot. You've met him a bunch of times, right? You've gone on cruises with him. Yeah. Practical yeah. Jokers. Impractical Jokers. Yeah. Um, I tried to watch his stand up special. It was okay. It's not really my cup of tea. He's funny and he's really good at, at delivering the jokes. It just wasn't mine. He's a good storyteller. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Burt Kreischer, great storyteller. Um, and he was great on the podcast and, and they got along really well. But after that, I ended up, and this is why I haven't watched a lot of TV, I ended up watching two episodes in a row of Are You Garbage? Uh, one with Harlan Williams, and then I watched a previous one with Colin Quinn. So I don't know. It's weird that Joe, being such a comedian, he puts himself up front as such a comedian's comedian, but yeah, he's not at all. He's he's a podcast host. He is a who is a comedian. Yeah. A comedian. Is he a comedian? I've seen him do stand up. He owns, a, he watched, he owns I, a comedy club. He has yeah. to be a comedian. Have you watched, I mean, have you ever enjoyed his stand up? Have you ever been like, oh, that new Joe Rogan's out? Nah, I can't I've wait to watch his, his stand up. Way more than I ever enjoyed a stand up from him. He's not anybody I would ever think is a comedian. No. I've seen him do, I've seen him three times do stand up. And the last time I saw him, uh, he was with Ari Shafir at the punchline. So this is 2008, I think, or 2009. Ari is very funny. Yeah, and the right, highlight right. of the night for me was smoking weed with uh, both of them that I brought and gave to them out behind the punchline, the old punchline. And I always thought it was cool that I got high with Joe. But, you know, that was I had more fun out there than I did sitting through the show. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that was a great place to see a show. Yeah. Uh, let's see a couple other things I wanted to talk about in the podcast universe. Are you guys digging um, Superfly, which is the offshoot? Uh, fly on the wall with Dana. It's pretty uh, fun. Harvey and David. I like and, watching it better than listening to it. I do too, but you, they realized that they had to go in that direction because they're really good at, at riffing on current topics and they're funny and, and they do a great job with it. But that Saturday night live one kind of got stale, especially with the younger people that they'd interviewed that they don't know anything about. And let's face it. They're a little bored. You can tell they're a little bored, yeah. especially Dana. Um, but this is good for them. I like it. And and they had a guest on the other day that completely surprised me. It was uh, that Dr. Stephen Greer, the UFO guy. And uh, that was very Rogan-esque of them, except for unlike Rogan, it wasn't three hours of, wow. Yeah. Or put that up, Jamie, or what the fuck? Uh, they were just generally inquisitive and asked fun questions. And, and Dana made him laugh. And uh, it was it was pretty cool. So if you're into that whole UFO thing... Um, Check it out. It was a fun episode. Uh, Two Bears, One Cave, I completely skipped because Bert wasn't there and I didn't want to watch Smug and Smugger, which would have been uh, Tom Segura and John Stewart. So Shut I kinda... your mouth. You leave yeah, John, John Stewart John alone. John Stewart's awesome. He's a treasure. He is. <laughs> He's a national treasure. All right. So do you guys. All right. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> John Stewart. Okay. He's a funny comedian. Fine. I get it. Where's his movie about cereal or toast or Pop-Tarts? Burt Kreischer is uh, kicking off. I guess he's got a huge tour and where it's uh, kicking off in Macon or it'll be in Macon uh, sometime next week. And so I work at a radio station for people who don't know that. Most people listening to this do. And our show is on from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, there's a morning show on from 9 to noon uh, hosted by Mark Aram. Mark Aram's on vacation next week, so Shelly Winter, who is our night host, is filling in for Shelly Winter. So they had this lined up, an interview with Shelly Winter, Burt Kreischer coming in uh, to promote his uh, to promote his upcoming show. And 
you know, I've been reaching out to Bert over the years, emailing him because he, he's told me, you know, email me whenever I'll get back to you. He never gets back to me. Or I texted him, you know, never get back to me. Now that, you know, he might not have access to that phone anymore. It might be a completely different number. But I also know um, a, a booker for him who does radio tours. And he reached out to management and the management respectfully declined to come on Radio Labyrinth. Well, anyway, uh Eric Von Hessler, who is the host of the show that I'm on from three to seven, he and I knew Bert back in the old days before Bert really blew up. He would come on the regular guy show and they moved the interview to with us. So we're sitting down with him for a half an hour on Tuesday. And mm. while, yeah, and I can't wait. I haven't seen him in forever. Um, I'm going to do the sad sack thing, you know, like, like I'm going to be very open. No, I won't do that. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to have a lot of fun with him. Um, and, and hopefully get him to, to say a few things that we can put in this podcast next week. And then we can put him on the cover and say we have him. And then a lot of people will look at it. <laughs> Are you going to ask him about the roast? Uh, I don't know what we're going to ask him about. Because Eric did watch the roast. And since I told Eric, I said, you know, I, I'm really plugged in. Eric watches podcast cringe. So he knows all the negative stuff. Um, you know, the, there's a video every week that Bert and Tom continue to sink lower and piss off. <laughs> every week there's videos of the, the, the further destruction, you know, anyway. Uh, so hopefully I'll get him to say a couple things. I would love to have him come on this show. I know he, he won't. And the reason I don't think it's him saying no, they are super busy and they're constantly doing marketing. And, uh, and plus they have their own shows that they put in the can and stuff. I'm going to start a radio labyrinth takedown podcast. You should. <laughs> You and uh, Rockdale Tiger drag him out of the. You know all these big doodads. They should do shows like this with nobodies because we'd be more fun to hang out with. That's why Scott Ryan had such a good time. That's exactly right. Yeah. True. You know we we're not nobodies. Well, we are. I mean, in the in the I'm fine with it. Fuck in it. the grand scheme of things, um, yeah, yeah. We'd, I'd love to have the money because we're not going to just blow smoke up their ass, right? Right. And we're true fans, and we really know what we're talking about, so, you know. Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is, don't read the comment cards. Um, at Deeb2359, who I believe is a relatively new uh, viewer, says, Good morning and thanks, and you are welcome, and thank you. Uh, Brett Perkins, 6888, says, thank you guys for the constant entertainment. You never have to apologize for giving your opinions. That's true, unless you piss off a large amount of people. Then you have to apologize. <laughs> uh, Moose Knuckle says, the fact that not only did Tim agree with my comment, but also gave me props on my username and made Jeff giggle hearing it al read aloud would have made my day. And I, and I consider high praise. But then Tim, as Cat Williams, kept calling me, bitch. <laughs> well, that makes my week for real. Oh, that's cool, Moose Knuckle. These, <laughs> Moose Knuckle. These last few weeks, I've become quite a fan and just want to say, keep up the excellent work, you guys. You've got a nice balance of personality, pacing, and variety to the show that I dig. Uh, if this one is read aloud next week, I was wondering how your Nick Cage impression is. Also, can you call me a bitch in your Seinfeld voice this time? <laughs> well, you're a bitch. <laughs> Why I, won't, do you, I won't hug you. Yeah, I'm not gonna hug you. I don't know. Kesha. Who you are. Kesha, yeah. I don't know. Kesha, whatever. Are you 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 brush your teeth with a bottle of Jack? Why would I want to get near that? <laughs> I like Moose Knuckle. Moose Knuckle's nice. They're friendly. They say nice things about me in this podcast. So I'm gonna give Moose Knuckle a hug. If I ever meet Moose Knuckle, I'm gonna give him a hug as long as he backs up. Or she. I don't know the gender. <laughs> I wish Moose Knuckle was my parent. If I would have had some support, maybe I would have went somewhere. You would have been great if your dad had been a moose knuckle. <laughs> oh, here's my mom and dad, moose knuckle and camel toe. <laughs> I'm I'm camel knuckle. <laughs> oh. So, oh, uh, if we do it, we do it my way. By the <laughs> let's go. That's terrible. That's more, Ke that's more Keanu. Uh, you know, I'm I'm hearing, or no, I'm hearing Lane from River's Edge, like God's own yes. methane. Yes, that's all right. You, you got to go back to raising Arizona for the the peach. Yeah, Nick Cage impression. Let's see, raising Arizona. 
I'll take these huggies and uh, yeah. anything else you got in your No, wait, no, no, uh, no. You have to go to a honeymoon in Vegas. Is that a pa ah ah or a pa ah ah ah? Well, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Well, Glenn, uh, let's see. I Is wear this jacket because it's a symbol of my belief in personal freedom and ind- individuality. Does the Pope wear a funny hat? Yeah, Glenn, I guess he does. You keep your damn hands off. That sounds like Hank Hill. I'll work on it, Moose Knuckle. <laughs> you Hang keep your damn hands off my wife. Just do Leaving Las Vegas, Nicholas Cage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Deeb 2359 comes back and says, uh, I'm dying up here was good. And yes, it was. It was. And then the last comment I'm not going to read. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't read the first part of the joke, so you can't read the punchline. I appreciate the tenacity of the commenter. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you for leaving comments. Please always leave comments for us. We love it. Huge views. Or, 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 or. Snooze. Views. Yeah, last week was uh, Eric, Jim Henson, Idea Man, and the Outlaws. I can't watch the Jim Henson one because I don't have Disney. Oh, uh, you don't? No, I don't have Disney anymore. But I did. I wasn't going to watch Eric because, oh, well, let's just knock the Outlaws out of the way. I haven't started that yet, but I like that show. So yeah. I'll it eventually. But um, Eric, I wasn't going to watch because the premise is that there's a missing kid and it's a boy and I have a son now. And it just freaks me out thinking about that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. He's um, nine, though, the kid, so. Oh, I know. It doesn't matter. It's it's still, you know, uh, arguably I'm a better dad than the character in, in Eric. Um, <laughs> but the first, Steph said, you guys got to watch this. You guys got to watch this. And I got sucked in within the first five minutes. It's such a good show. There's a lot going on. You got people from The Wire in it, two people from The Wire that I've seen. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Abby Hoffman. Hoffman. Yeah. And she's such a great actress. Uh, and then you got, what's his name from Fantastic Beasts? He's been on this show before. Dan Fogler. Yeah, Dan Fogler. He's great. Yeah, he's great in it. Uh, there's a, a, a supernatural element to it. Um, it's, I don't want to spoil it. I mean, you go in and you watch the first episode. It was late and I still had to watch the second episode. So I'll have it finished by uh, the end of the week. And it's that early eighties, gritty New York city. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, it's it's an interesting show. You guys have all finished it, right? Or Jeff? No, I'm, I haven't finished it yet. Either. I blazed through it in two days. But I'm yeah. I'm watching it and the Jim Henson documentary at the same time, and it's weird because <laughs> yeah, because he's, it's he's obviously like a Jim Henson type character, right? Because the show he does, the kid show he does, yeah. it's a mystery show. And uh, I'm glad to find out that uh, that the guy from The Wire had nothing to do with it. Spoiler alert! At least so far. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> well, of all the corruption in the police department, as you, as you go on, there's all that going on. There's there's just a lot of lot well, touches, of stuff going on. It touches on police corruption. It touches on drugs, uh, child trafficking, AIDS. Now, the the main cop in this is is working uh, missing persons. He got kicked out of Vice or something. And that guy, I've never seen him before. He's a great actor. Oh, he's so good. He and in the first just- episode. Go ahead. He looks just like the guy from the Farmers commercial, like a young version of him. He does look that's his son or yeah. something. Yeah. Well, in the first episode, I thought he got into bed with like his aunt or something. And it wasn't until the second episode, like, oh, yeah, he's gay. <laughs> and that's his, his lover. Or his he's partner. just a lot older than him, too. And yeah. Well, he also has AIDS. Right. right. Yeah. 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 But this week, Ren Fair. This is from the Safety Brothers. It's a documentary about the, the world's largest Renaissance festival. And the the old guy is like an old perv who's like on the all these sugar daddy sites. Really? Yeah, and he but he wants to sell the the Ren Fair and, and retire. And it's real? Yeah. It's a, it's only three part or two. It's pretty good. I might have you be, have you ever uh, been to one of those? I've never been to one of those. I've yeah, been I've to been one to once. Yeah. yeah, the one here. Yeah. The show's pretty good though. The, the old guy's quite a character. Uh the Acolyte started this week. Watched the first two. I imagine it's great. Yeah, I liked it. There's a Wookiee Jedi who you only see at the end of the second episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. He's, I don't have Disney either more either temp. So yeah, the force. Yeah, you is guys female. are on your own. Yeah. The force is female. The they yeah. retconned. Uh, no, it's the guy from Squid Games is the the lead guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't care. 
it's it's a uh, uh, Star Wars. It's not made for me. So All right, last one is Let's Canary Sing, Cindy Lauper documentary. I'll watch that. Yeah, it's on Paramount sure. Plus. She's doing a farewell tour. This is like her documentary yeah. about her career. What's it on? Paramount Plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's something I can watch. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, by the way, the Acoly- they they've told me right there in the acolyte. The thing about the acolyte is the showrunner was um, Harvey Weinstein's assistant for five years. Hmm. 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 Failing upwards. Uh, Steph picks this week. Mine is real simple. Richard Thompson. He is prolific in releasing music. He put a brand new album out last uh, Friday or Thursday. I don't know, whatever. It was the 31st called Ship to Shore. It's a new album, all brand new songs. You can check it out if you like that sort of thing. I enjoyed it. I've listened to it a bunch of times. Hmm. Mine is, uh, it's in a podcast uh, and it starts, well, it, the first episode will have already aired when the show comes out Saturday, but it's the weekly show with Jon Stewart. Nice. It's you on Apple. Yeah, it starts tomorrow, Thursday. Murder people or talk about murder because I figured that would go. Right the <laughs> no, no, but uh, he inter- he has guests and they talk about you know topics of the world and whatnot and nice. uh, you know just silly stuff too. On top of that, but it starts uh, and it I think that it's exclusively on Apple Podcasts. Okay, cool. Cool. Then it won't be interrupted every ten seconds like right. it's something on Spotify. <laughs> Right. Mine is uh, Obliterated on Netflix. It's a series. It's like really heavily 80s influenced. Too many penises. But other than that, it's very good. You can't ever have too many penises, Jeff. <laughs> it really uh, depends. You, when you watch it, you'll see there's too many penises. <laughs> is it Game of Thrones level penises? Yeah. Probably that more. is a lot of penises. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot. But the, it's really heavily 80s influenced with the just the action and the comedy and see Thomas Howell's in it. Let's see. Mine is uh, it's a YouTube channel and it's called Archie Moreno and the little Fox rail cart. And what this is, these people all over the country, um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of abandoned railroad tracks. And so these guys, it's a whole community of people that do this across the country, but they build these little carts and with a little lawnmower engine and like a lawn chair. And then they just cruise these abandoned railroad lines for like tens, you know, miles and miles and miles. And they film it all. And it's pretty interesting. It kind of looks like Mad Max, like huh. a, a, a Mad Max tour uh, on these little carts. But it's it's this little community, which I think is pretty interesting. And there there's a lot of different channels that have it but uh archie marino and the little fox rail cart is a good one all right thank you guys hey some plugs and stuff uh every monday i release a show called trambles it's audio only but i have added it to my youtube page so it doesn't mess with our algorithm uh and it's just a still image uh so uh y- you can you can listen to that if you like to um that is uh that that's fun for me to do um this week i, I talk about uh angel the 80s movie Angel, and then uh, another movie that I watched. I also do a radio show every Saturday night on 95.5 FM, 7.50 AM in Atlanta called The Popcast, where I interview, you know, famous people if I can and and talk about entertainment, whatever. My my last guest or my most recent guest was Dweezil Zappa, Frank Zappa's son, who is coming to Atlanta on September 7th. You know, you uh, you can find that anywhere you find podcasts. Just look up The Popcast with Tim Andrews. My guest uh, tonight, if you're able to listen live, uh, is is an actress uh, and a a writer and a producer. Her name is Sherry Winkleman. Uh, She's from Chicago, but she's in Atlanta right now. She's a graduate of the theater school at DePaul University, has worked in theater off-Broadway regionally and internationally for 25 years. Um, She's been in TV and and movies. She's been on Chicago PD, Fire and Med, and a comedy series called Play by Play on Roku. Um, And she uh, wrote a comedy or a dramedy called Bingo Heist, which won a bunch of awards and uh, won at Cannes. So we'll talk to her about that. Uh, And it's being made into a movie, which I think they're going to shoot here. 
And I got connected to her through an old friend of uh, mine and Jeff's named Mike Diefenbach. So thank you, Mike, for connecting me. She's his sister-in-law. Oh, that's why I, I, I was like, I, I know I recognize that name from somewhere. Well, I'm excited to speak with her. It's going to be a fun interview. Cool. And the, movie, the whole premise is cool. Um, so you can check that out. Hey, if you want a Father's Day gift for the father guy in your life, grandpa, father, brother, whatever, uh, how about you go to cameo.com slash T Andrews ATL and I'll do one for you. I'm not allowed to plug it on the radio anymore. So uh, I'll just plug it right here. Um, give me your money. Shout outs. You know, if you go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews, you could sign up at any level and get access to our weekly Patreon show. Lately, we've been watching things and commenting on them and having fun. This week, we watched a Tex Avery cartoon, The House of Tomorrow. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And we take your comments there and we take your your uh, suggestions there to heart. And uh, we will we will play them uh, and, and talk about them. Uh, but you can also come in at uh, at the twenty five dollar level and be a Radio Labyrinth executive producer and get credit for this show. And we appreciate that very much. If you're new, you get a t shirt from our t shirt shop, and I'll do a doodle for you. How about that? Um, listen, thank you very much to Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Mike D, and Matt Carter. We love you guys, and we love all of our Patreon members, no matter if they're producers or not. Um, if you're uh, a listener, you're a diehard listener, that's cool. Keep it in your podcatcher. If you uh, want to venture out and go to the YouTube page, that would be great as well. We're close to 1,000 subscribers. How many? How far are we away from that, Dustin? Oh, we're less than 50. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get it up there. Let's get it up there. Let's get that, let's get that 1,000 so we can get that sweet juice from AdSense. Uh, and then Dustin will feel like it's worthwhile what he's been doing for three or four years now. Um, so, yeah, subscribe. Even if you're a podcast listener, go subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't ever have to watch it. If you don't want it, it'd be great if you did. But you don't have to. Uh, and and make sure you turn on your notifications and, and comment and like and all that jazz. So um, thank you guys very much. And thank you three. I guess we'll talk again next week. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Please remember to keep it canon. Well, please say all good things come to an end. What's that got to do with this show? <laughs> <laughs>